Hey, this is Chris at Control Bionics. The video that we're going to be doing today is going to be over the spatial control with the neuro node. So the spatial is something that is similar to how we have the setup for the EMG, but instead of reading the electrical signals, it's basically reading the movement that you have within the space, therefore spatial sensor. So what you have here, as you can see, I've got my electrodes off, so I don't have this trying to read EMG off of my fingers or anything. I just have this here just to have it in an easy place to kind of show where we've got the movement. So what I'm going to do, and there's going to be a lot on this graph screen, but we're going to go over it kind of step by step. I just want to kind of show what we have here and what's going on. So I'm going to press play, take this out of pause, and you'll see that we still have our blue line that is for our activity, the green line that is for our activation, our yellow line, which is for our rest. And then you'll notice three more lines up here. These three lines can be turned off in the spatial, but for the time right now, um, this is gonna be for our demonstration here, so I can kind of show you what these are and how to work with these um, for certain scenarios. So each of these lines, the red, the orange, and the purple here, represents basically a direction of movement with the neuro node. So you'll see that if I lift the neuro node, it's gonna kind of read that motion there. So if I do a lot of up and down motion, you'll see that the purple one gets a lot more movement out of that because that's the one that's focused on the up and down motion. If I turn it side to side, just kind of shimmy it there, you'll see the orange one gets a lot more motion because that one's covering that. Same thing, if I do a tilt forward or in this direction, you see that the red is gonna get that motion. So each of these, as well as, as under the fact that there is a lot of information here, each one is kind of focused on a specific direction. So depending on how this is positioned or what movement's being done, whether this be a lifting up and down, um, maybe it's tilting like this, or maybe they just kind of have a, a drift to the side, you can see that one of these is gonna have the most motion and that's gonna be where you're gonna focus on. So for now, just for the display for display purposes, I'm going to do this motion right here, this this side shake, and then we're going to focus on that orange line. So what I'm going to do here is let's get rid of all that information that's on there. I want to press that bottom left button. I'll show you here this bottom left button, this hamburger menu. I'm going to go into advanced, and then that's where our spatial control is. Now you won't see all of your settings here. This is basically just to kind of affect what is displaying, what's being recorded and all that. So we wanna go ahead and turn off the red line and the purple line. So this is Z coordinate and X coordinate. We're gonna turn those check marks off because we're focused on that orange one. So we're also gonna come down here to these scaling lines and we're gonna turn this red one down to zero, and this purple one down to zero. Now there are scenarios where you may have two of these going at the same time. But what we're doing here is making it so it's basically counting 100% of that orange line's activity, but it's not counting any of the movement on that red line or any of the movement on the purple line with the zero values, so that it's not going to read me moving it up and down and be like, oh, well, that should have been a switch because that's Z, this purple here, but we don't want that. We just want this side shaking motion. So we're just gonna focus on the, the yellow one being at 100%, this orange one being 100%, and this Y coordinate being checkmarked. Now your options that you're gonna see up here at the top, the spatial switching being checkmarked just shows that we are no longer using EMG, we're using this spatial movement. Your spatial sample rate, the higher this is, is going to allow the system to basically refresh and send more data per second. So the higher this is, you're gonna be getting more data, so therefore it's gonna be a little more accurate for each small movement. So keeping this out of 400 is gonna be your preferred. There are some scenarios where you can set it down to 200, but most likely you're gonna be using this 400 Hertz. Now the spatial sensitivity, the 2G that it has right now means that it's going to be requiring very little motion out of this to get, um, to get it to read that movement. If we turned it up, it's basically going to be requiring at that point even more movement in order for it to read what's going on. So instead of this small shake, I would probably have to give it a pretty big shake there to do that. So we're gonna keep that on 2G just for that small motion. And that's all that you're gonna have on this screen here. Your other things that you have here for activity, average activity and delta activity, these are other display lines so that it will show um, 
the actual so if say like if we had something like we were did dynamic scaling on the emg video where it gave you averages over periods of time um, or it showed that the um, the green line and the yellow line were moving with it these are going to be somewhat similar these are going to give you what the actual activity is what the average of that activity is for the motion and then your delta activity is going to be kind of the addition of all of these motions together but we don't need those right now and for most points you will be able to leave those off and just work with the x y and z coordinate and then set your values for how much of each one that you want to actually be recorded in the motion so i'm going to press ok and then done up here at the top i'm going to go back to the graph so as you can see we only have that yellow line here which you can turn that off as well so that you can have it at 100 percent but uncheck the box for this coordinate for this y coordinate which it shows down here thankfully what that is but this is just to kind of show that now we're going to be kind of matching this movement area to our signal down here and the more i shake it basically the louder or the more it's going to read there so where it's at right now it's probably a little high for us to be able to actually reach that green and yellow line or uh, to pass the green line here so instead of trying to shake it heavily like this, let's get it to the point where we can do this motion right here, just enough that we can send it above that. So our line that we have here, it looks like, now you'll see that there is a right side and a left side to these numbers and they are different. This right side is gonna to pertain to these colored lines up here at the top, so this orange line, it's basically showing that you've got motion in one direction or another direction that you won't have to worry about too much. The one that we're focused on is the numbers here on the left, which is gonna be the one that's gonna to pertain to our blue signal line. So if we do a little motion, we can see that we could probably get to about 0.5 in some scenarios. If we give it a nice shake. Or even if we give it a tilt, because it's still that same motion, that same direction. So we can get about a 0.5 somewhat reliably here. So let's go ahead go into our middle button down at the bottom and you'll notice that these are going to be very similar settings you're still going to have your static scaling your dynamic scaling all of your spatial settings are here instead of the um instead of it saying for emg they're still going to do the same purpose here so this whole section is still going to be the same as emg ignore switch repeats is going to give you a block whenever you make a switch so that you can only switch once in a set period of time Key press off delay, keep that at 0.1. And then you have your auto baseline for forcing the signal line down, your dynamic scaling for whenever somebody can't use static numbers, they have an, like an ever-changing signal. And then long press for whenever a signal is being held. Long press, I would not suggest being used for this because that's basically just requesting that you're doing a lot of motion consistently. So long press, I would not use with spatial. Same thing with your space enter one, two, and F12 key. It's basically going to be the keyboard key that you send when you make a switch. So we will keep that on space for now. Your Y axis maximum, you'll see that now instead of a microvolt symbol, you have a G symbol on here. And that's going to be that left side that we were looking at. So instead of it being 100, we don't need that much on this. This is just going to be three Gs on this. And we'll leave that there for now. Our audio signal is on to beep whenever we do make a signal, and visual signal will leave off for that flash, because we don't need that flash. So where we were is about a 0.5. So we're gonna take this green line down. Let's just drag it here. We're gonna do about a 0.5. And then our yellow line, we're gonna take that down to, let's do 0.4. So they'll be close, but somewhat discernible here down at the bottom. So let's see, let's go ahead and I'm gonna make now you can see if I move it down like this, it's not reading that much because we're not looking at that. So I'm going to go ahead and I have to do that left to right motion that I had. Now I've got this set to where I'm doing a little more motion than what is really necessary for this. Just out of the pure factor that whenever I show this here, it's a little bit easier for me to show that I've done this motion. And that if I do that also, I get that green light on the neural node. Same thing if I was just to do a tilt. So say I had this like position on top of something and then all I 
me to do is kind of turn my hand over on the side there. And that'll read the same motion and make that signal for me. Now let's say that we've got it on here and we're not sure what we're looking for. So we've got it and all they've got really is just this kind of this, this forward motion here. So this would be the same thing as like feels like on a foot or something that all they have is just kind of like a, a dip in the foot or if they have like a lift. So you can see we're not getting much activity. So what we would do in this scenario is go in that hamburger menu on the bottom left, go into advanced and spatial. And let's figure out where we're getting this from. We're just going to check all three of these. Go back to the graph. Okay, and let's say that, um, oh, that's right. This will be important to know as well. It's not going to track those other ones. As you saw, it wasn't moving because we didn't have these set to record that information. So we'll set these all back at 100. Press OK and now go back to the graph. And there's our lines that we were looking for. So let's say this is our motion and we've just got kind of a lift here. So the lift that we have here looks like it's probably the heaviest on either the purple or the red there. They look to be about the same, but the yellow is not providing us quite as much. I would say that if anything, our purple is probably giving us the sharpest line for this. It's probably because it's reading the up and down motion. Whereas the red line, if this was just kind of a drop, you would get a little more out of that red line. So we'll do that then. We'll, we'll make this a drop and we'll go for that red line. Go back into our advanced and spatial. So we're gonna turn off the orange and the purple this time, since our focus is on the red line. Press okay, done. Go back into our graph. So now, whenever I make that dip, of the neuron node, it's going to do that motion for us there, go above the green line and make a switch. Now, say I've got only just a little bit of motion here. I'm going to do like a little motion like that. Still reading a little low on this, so we can always come in here in the settings, turn this down to 0.3, we'll turn this down to 0.4. So we're just barely off of that. and then get that motion there. So what I'm gonna do on the settings now is we're gonna do dynamic scaling, which will work the same way for EMG for us here, in that whenever we are making movement, it's going to try and track that. So we're gonna keep this at 8.5. Actually, let's make this, because that's a pretty big gap for this. Let's go ahead and make this a 0.25 and then we'll make our signal off 110%. So this one's gonna be the same as EMG. You're looking at a percentile of the blue line. And then this 20 seconds is just that window, that time frame that it's recording the information to give you your, your yellow line here. The green is always gonna be set in dynamic to be a set number above your yellow. So our 0.25, so let's go and press okay and see where that puts us at. So you see it should be just above there at about 0.25. So if I was to make a bunch of movement, it's going to try and average that out so that I can keep it there. And then make that motion. So it'll stay down where I'm at. If I'm making too much motion, it's going to start moving it up so that I'm not continuously doing it. As you can see, it's cutting out a little bit of that there, but our gap is probably a little too small. So I'll go ahead and turn that up to 30, let's say 35. Gap's a little bit larger there. So I'll start averaging that out. And you can see I'm no longer breaking on these small motions that I don't mean to do it, but whenever I make an intentional, it's going to do that. Now our screen here, this red data is not really needed for us now. So to kind of help with all the information that's on the screen, we're just gonna go back into spatial. We're gonna turn off that, that marker here, but we still need this at 100%. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna press okay. Press done, go back to the graph. You see that red line is gone, but we're still reading that activity here. But that would be the general rundown for spatial. Again, you're basically looking at this being something to where instead of using that, um, that EMG signal off of a muscle site, you can attach this to certain places um, that have some motion 
and then track which motion that it has from the neuro node to kind of get a signal here in place of that EMG signal. So this could be placed on, as you can see, like on the end of my hand, or it can be placed on the, like the wrist, or it could be placed on the, uh, the tip of a shoe. That could be done as well. So if you've got like a foot motion, you can do a little bit there. Going over the settings again here, your dynamics gonna work very similar. You're just gonna notice that you've got a, a G instead of a microvolts for this top one. But the way it's gonna work is gonna be very similar to the EMG. Turn that off, we'll go back to static. Static's gonna be very similar as well. Again, just looking at that G scaling rather than the microvolts. The spatial settings here are gonna be the same front to back whenever you come to uh, here from the EMG section. And your display settings are just gonna be, again, the difference of the microvolts to the Gs rather than, rather than just the microvolts. Audio signal and visual signal will work the same for you. Now, if I go into the hamburger menu, advanced and spatial controls, again, the checkbox at the top here is just to turn on spatial, so you're using spatial instead of the EMG. Your sample rate, the higher this is, the more accurate your data is going to be that the neural node is sending basically from second to second. So we're gonna leave this at 400. Your spatial sensitivity, is 2G, so it's only looking for about 2G. So let me show this here. If I turn this up to 8G, go to the graph. You'll see it's, even with this motion, it's not nearly peaking as high as what it was. Let's go back into here. So 8G is gonna require more motion than what a 2G is. So we're gonna leave this at 2G in most scenarios. Your spatial graphing, these are just going to show the actual lines that are reading your motion in different directions for this. So this will display the lines. Your activity, average activity, and delta activity are added lines for trying to track that data. In very, um, I would say, difficult uh, cases, you can use these to kind of really figure out where we're ending up at. But in most cases, these can be left off and we can work off of the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Any coordinates that you are working with, make sure you do have them turned up to 100% so that you can track them. Whenever you know which one you need or how much of one you need, you can then turn down specific ones that you want and how much of one you want. So say we only want to track about 50% of the orange line and then we need to track all the movement of the red line, we can do that. Making sure that these are all the way up here and these marked will let us see those motions. So if I go back to the graph, I can track different motions, how that affects it, and which ones I wanna have on, and which ones I don't wanna have on, so that I can have that transfer down to our blue signal line. But that should cover spatial for you there. Again, as always, if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us so that we can help you out or give you any further assistance with this. Otherwise, uh, you all have yourselves a wonderful day and thank you for joining me for this video.